the cornered hog will turn and fight. And a wild hog is very possibly the most dangerous animal in the wild. And he knows no enemies and he knows no fear. This area 150 years ago was a complete hardwood bottomland forest. There were no roads, there were no railroads in here. William Faulkner wrote extensively about it in his book, The Big Woods, and how in two generations it was de-rivered, de-swamped, and denuded. You can see how this, this hoof print is rounded at the tips, whereas a deer track will be a, a lot more pointed. And this county is, is like many other counties in the southeast. Pigs were brought in and moved around for sport hunting. A lot of these hunters and hunting clubs can remember 20 or 30 years ago when pigs were actually brought in. Now, if you ask those people today, um, they would tell you they made a huge mistake. These pockets of forest, a lot of them are along low-lying rivers and stream beds, which act as corridors for game. Uh, and your hogs will hit these corridors, and they'll move from one pocket of woods to another pocket of woods. And if they're pressured in one, well, they know where that other one is, and they'll go over there to your neighbor's place over there. So a hog is an extremely smart animal. So what they're doing right now, as they're just coming through here, pulling down stalk by stalk, eating what they want, the rest goes to waste. Uh, most of the time, these pigs are coming through here, eating the top side of that ear off, and the rest will lay there and rot, unless a coon or something comes by and picks it up. I mean, we've got this right here that's just gonna lay here and rot. I mean, every time they take a step, they're knocking all this corn over. What they don't eat is rotting, you know, and they're out here middle of this cornfield. Obviously, we're not out here in the middle of the night. We're not gonna come out here and mess with them. They're confined. They've got their own little, you know, whatever they wanna do out here. Nobody's bothering them. No pressure on them whatsoever. Um, it's just not a lot we can do until we get these crops out of the field. We can't bait them right now. They've got so much to eat that, you know, they're not interested in what, what little bit we're putting on the ground for them. There's not a lot we can do, really. It was about 10, 10 something at night. So I, I grabbed this gun right here. This is a 45 Ruger. I ran out, popped the light on. Man, never seen nothing that ugly and that big. I, I didn't know what it was. I never seen a wild hog before. I still farm the old time way. I don't believe in using chemicals. I believe in using, uh, uh, making my own fertilizer out of compost and uh, uh, I, and I like raising my own food. I like eating right out of my garden. When you when you got when they root up the place and make these deep holes, it's impossible to plant that. You got to diss it up and smooth it down again and re then plant. My field year before last, I thought I had a great field. Just from here, you can't see out in the middle. And once we harvest the field, they just had rooted up everything. You know, I mean, it was just, just had destroyed it, you know. Our levee system, which protects this whole area through here from Memphis all the way to Vicksburg, is a totally unique system that has to be maintained. The integrity of the levee has to be such that during high water times, we don't have any weak spots in the levee. 
Any areas where trucks have rutted the levee up, it could cause erosion. And when hogs come out of the woods and go to rooting around, they'll root up an area half as big as a football field in a couple of nights. It's decimating the integrity of that levee. We've got to go in after those hogs damage it and fix those areas because we cannot afford to go into a flood situation with these areas like that. The hogs eventually going they're going to be uncontrollable if if it's if something's not come up with. I mean, because every year there's hogs you're seeing hogs in areas you've never seen before. I mean, from where I'm from in Louisiana, we're steadily hearing more and more about hogs. We've never had hogs. And now you're starting to hear more about hogs in our area. So, I mean, without aerial, without nighttime hunting, you're not gonna be able to control these things. So, I mean, the, the having the USDA to be able to come in, cause they can do more in four hours than we can do all year. You can take a planter, you know, let's say it's a 50 acre field planted. Well, if you take 30 hogs out there, they're gonna, each one's gonna get them a row and they're just gonna root straight down that row. And in, in, in one night, I mean, they can do literally half that field, you know, 20, you can have 20 acres gone in a night. So you're talking about, you know, thousands of dollars can be done in one night. Uh, and then once the corn gets up, you can ride in a turner and think, it doesn't look that bad, but you can go 30 yards out in the field and there may be a 30 acre, it, it mashed in the ground. If, if there's a problem, these guys will call us and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll come in and do our best. It may be a, it may be a time that uh, calling helicopter is a good deal. It may be a time that the trap's the best deal. It may be a time that I know right where they are and I can put five guys with guns on the end of the turn row and I can run 40 out in the field, they can kill them all. You know, so it just, it depends on every situation is different. We're not playing, but it takes, I've seen these hogs, I've been, I'm 38, I guess I've been hunting them since I was 15. So over that amount of time, I've seen them go from not a whole lot around here to blow up. Hog is not indigenous to this area. And as game preserve people that try to conserve resources, even though we're hunters, uh, we, we, we have been able to build a deer herd back here that's unprecedented in this area. And as we plant food plots and plant crops and all for our turkeys and our deer and our bear that are having a good strong comeback right in this area right here now, your hogs come in and destroy all of that. So uh, everybody has its place. A hog ain't supposed to be in the woods around here. There are lots of times when I get up in the morning and go out into the, on the river or go out into the woods, lots of times I'm duck hunting. It absolutely just chokes me up to see what we have right here in this area and how the hogs are destroying a good bit of it. Lots of times when I get up to go duck hunting in the wintertime on a Sunday morning, folks say, you're not going to church? I tell them I'm sitting in my church. I'm out here right now amongst all of God's great glory and creation, doing what we do, being amongst God's creatures and a God amongst God's creation. And in the woods is as good a church to me as going into a brick and mortar church. It's, it's hard to get something to grow on it, but the hog damage here, it actually started the erosion a couple of years ago. And, and then right through here are human remains that we'll have to cover again with dirt. Just judging by the pottery that they're associated with, I would say they're about a thousand years old. But, um, yeah, this is and yeah, this is a lot more serious when you're talking about having human remains being exposed. That's a lot more serious than just disturbing a a trash pit. But all of it is damage, archaeological damage. 
earliest occupation here is what we call um, uh, late woodland, and it's that's it's about AD 700. To learn anything from through archaeology, you have to have things in a in their original context in situ, and hog digging, you know disturbs that original context and makes things out of place so that you know, we, it destroys the information, destroys what we can learn from it. So there's a little bit of everything right here, but it did not look like this until hogs got started on it. And every year, you know, we bring some dirt in, we pat it down, and we put down erosion material. And I've even sodded right here before, put down some fresh sod, and they just keep coming back every winter. And so I expect they'll be back here soon.